Sam has been playing Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and the biggest thing that I think most people will know and I want to know is, are there, is this just a cash grab using the Prince of Persia IP, or have they actually made a really good game? It's a really good game. Yay! Like, I pulled four hours this morning, and I did not want it to end. I kind of been describing it in my head as like Rayman Origins meets Hollow Knight in terms of like how it presents. So it's a really good Metroidvania game um, in terms of like the exploration, but also like the combat, like the bosses are really hard. Um, and like, I obviously it takes a while to warm into these games and like some of them are, you know, start off quite simple. You've just got like a basic attack and then you kind of get like an air dash and then you get a bow and arrow and then you get like a, like a sort of a boomerang version of the bow and arrow and it is layering and layering and layering but it's also like you've got to make sure that you're dodging out of the way and parrying and blocking and like it's it's and obviously like the whole point of it is that you're supposed to be that you're rescuing the prince of persia and you're not playing as the prince of persia which i think for a lot of people they were quite like cross about that rather than like yeah celebratory with the fact that hey look it's the first new prince of persia game we have for a long time right like the remake 13 14 years really? oh my god that's longer than i thought and you know it's like that remake it may come out at some point but at least we're getting a really really good side scrolling platformer metroidvania game where you're rescuing the prince of persia and i like I, things are going to get tiny wimey like i can feel it i do empathize with people uh, it not being the prince of persia because I had the same reaction when I watched the trailer. I went, oh, they're going for a new aesthetic with the Prince of Persia. This looks amazing. He looks fantastic. And then as the trailer went on, it was like, oh, you're rescuing the prince. And I kind of had to rewatch the trailer and went, well, he's not the prince. And I was a bit like, I don't understand. Then why is it called? And then I, I, immediately, my first thought, like you said, getting timey you me. I was just like, well, if he isn't now, he will be. Or the, it was just that clear thing where it was like all of the people getting angry. I understood it. But partly I was like, just wait until you play the game. Then you can get angry if you don't ever play as a prince or it doesn't work out or they don't story canon it or time loop it somehow. Fine, you can get angry then. You've just watched an amazing gameplay trailer. The style of it is amazing as well. It looks so good. You start out the game in sort of like a battleground and then you, and then you move into Mount Kath, which I think it's like, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's like the mountain where the main game takes place and you're kind of like in the land of the gods then. And like, that's when things start to get like weird and like there's lots of like interesting characters that start popping up and going like oh you think you haven't got time and they're like the people that you followed in there have been in there for 30 years even though it's been like five minutes since you like followed them in there or like a couple of hours so there's a lot of intrigue already with like the idea of time and like you you encounter some statues which have kind of like been frozen as they're falling and then eventually you can like hit these orbs and then the entire map will like move around or well, not the entire map the whole area around you will move around and platforms will like go back into place which is another part of that kind of metroidvania unlocking thing but it's also like a really cool way of doing that that plays into the gameplay mechanics and stuff that we know from the prince of Persia series and like it just looks visually amazing as well i've got a slightly like cartoony element to it the makes everything look really pretty like there's lots of different areas that you move through like there's like an underground le level there's a bit with like these horrible birds that come at you but it's all sort of like lovely tropical jungles and like waterfalls and things so they've had a lot of fun with the sort of mystical element allowing it to have loads of different kind of locations the um the graphical style as well also means that while it will come to playstation 4 and playstation 5 xbox series x and s Xbox One, I want to say. Yep, Xbox One. It's also going to fulfill my, the Metroid Dread hole that I've had since I've, been, I've completed it because it's going to come to Switch as well because, again, it's that very similar thing. So this graphical style just means it's going to... It just looks like the perfect game to um, have on the Switch and playing on the couch, which is fantastic. So all in all, very, very good. Is there anything that was a little bit jarring with it, like difficulty level, something that people need to get be aware of? Because that's kind of again going back to the original, original Prince of Persia games where there is a difficulty bar that you do need to be hitting. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. Like, uh, you've, you've got to be quick on your feet and it's very, it is very Metroidvania in that way. Like, lots of dodging, lots of parrying, lots of like, well-timed, very Metroid, you know, very Metroid Dread in terms of like, the bosses if you go through the door then you know you, you're stuck in a boss fight for a bit or whatever how are the checkpoints yes there's checkpoints in the form of 
Whack Whack Trees. <laughs> W-A-K, W-A-K. I love, I'm definitely not saying that in, you know, it, I played it all in Persian as well with like English subtitles. So it's... Oh, but that's so good. Very nice kind of like building that atmosphere really like. But yeah, so you, these beautiful trees sort of unfurl and... It was interesting, there was two different modes, like, which is a very Ubisoft thing to do. There's like the guided version and the exploration version. They put me on guided because they were like, let's make sure that you get to see everything that you can do in this preview. And it, occasionally the sort of golden glistening leaves of the whack whack tree will kind of be like, you should probably go this way rather than like trying to beat your head against the wall. And I think that's quite nice the kind of balancing of... It's hard, like you can't like cheese through the boss battles, but at least like if you're not used to playing a Metroidvania game and you want to get involved, like it's not like, you, you know, when you can get lost and you're like, actually, I don't need to be going this way right now. You can kind of just let the tree just be like, just maybe go up that way rather than, you know, go go left rather than right at the next sort of fork, which was good for me trying to get through as much as you can and, you know, a limited time, but actually is a really nice thing for new players as well. One one interesting thing that I think uh, my partner who overheard me playing throughout <laughs> the whole thing will remember is there's a prison guard who is kind of patrolling certain areas of the map. And he's kind of got like, this purple aura around him where if you get inside the aura, he's got a magic stick that just sends you to jail. So like you've got to avoid this thing again very metroid dread in that in that sort of way apart from it's not death you're being put into jail and like the first time you have to figure out how to break out of jail then every time you go back like the door's still open but it means you've got to like oh, crap but retrace my entire steps and go back to it and it made it really tense because you're just like i i know i was like two like doors away from like the next tree but this blinking guard kept like just stabbing me with his little magic stick and sending me back to prison and it was it was very clever because it was very unexpected i was like oh it's another boss battle blah, blah blah went up to give him like a whack with my sword and he just went Boop, straight to prison this it was, it's was very good it was very unexpected and yeah it's, it's a very clever creative game that has lots of like clever puzzles like very, very interesting enemies that like constantly challenge you and it was way better than i expected it to be I've been hearing lots of good things and I'm glad that four hours of playing it has just reinforced the fact that it is very good and it's very fun and, and there's lots there to explore as well. The fact that you've played four hours of it and you're just like, give me more, give me more, give me more. Um, when's it coming out? January 18th. So really not that long away now. Oh yeah, but that's so close to Christmas. This would be a perfect Christmas game where I could ignore my family and just sit on the sofa. Hey, I'm still going outside. It's too cold as it is. So January's perfect. This is going to be great. Yeah, especially the Prince of Persia. Like, oh, look at the sands. Look how warm it is. All the palm trees. And you look outside and it's minus two, whatever it is here right now. But fantastic. All right, thank you. Um, I can't wait for this. It sounds really, really interesting. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown coming in January.